bar is a licensed place in all kinds of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks to the guest. It is usually found in hotels, cruise, resorts, casinos, clubs and other parts of cities. A bar is one part of the food and beverage department generating revenue in hotels. By the end of this session, you will learn the ideal bar layout, the fundamentals of bar operations, bar and cellar controls and about internal controls in bars. There are various types of bars known by different names but all used to serve alcoholic drinks. The possible range is almost endless. There may be bars serving alcohol in hotel's garden, by the pool, in the pool, in a room, in a corporate box at some sporting event, in banquets or in a licensed cafe and so on. However, the most common names for bars are pubs, the least expensive and basic type of hotel bar is usually called a public bar or a front bar. Lounges, these bars are more comfortably furnished, more expensive than the pub. They may have comfortable seatings and low tables and are generally situated in the lobby area. Cocktail bars are found mostly in international hotels are the most luxuriously furnished and lavishly equipped. As the name implies, cocktail bars specialize in mixed drinks and cocktails and therefore bartenders working in them need special cocktail mixing skills. They sometimes open only in the evenings and they usually offer tray service as well as bar service. Club bars these are found in some taverns and hotels and are suitable for clubs or special interest groups and are sometimes reserved for their meetings. Do not confuse a hotel's club bar with the bars in registered clubs which are a different matter altogether. A big club often has several bars, for example a members bar or sportsman bar with pool tables. Nightclub bars are found in nightclubs and discos. They serve cocktails and mixed drinks as well as a range of beers, both local and imported. Often they offer both tray and bar service. They are open until the early hours of the morning. Another type of bar is called the dispense bar. It is a bar which is used for the preparation of the drinks for staff who then deliver them to customers elsewhere. For example, in a restaurant where there is no attached bar. It is likely to be less lavishly equipped than a full-scale pub or cocktail bar. In many hotels of course, there is no need for a separate dispense bar as the drinks may be picked up from a fully equipped bar. Wine bars offer a wide range of wines, some of which are available by the glass. Usually, a limited range of beers and spirits will be available also. Often, a wine bar will be combined with a small casual restaurant. Wine bar staff must of course be well informed about wine. Many bars are found in hotel bedroom with a range of miniature bottles of spirits, half bottles of wine, a few beers, mixers, nuts etc. are available for guest convenience. Items taken from the mini bar must be added to the guest account to be paid for when they check out. A banquet bar is a temporary setup in the banquet halls to serve alcoholic drinks during a specific function. The type and quality of drinks to be served are generally predetermined at the time of booking the function. The drinks may either be brought by those who wish to drink or paid by the host for all the drinks consumed 
by their guest during the function. The banquet bar collects the required stock either from the main bar or the cellar. Sometimes the guests would bring their own liquor bottles, in which case a cockage charge may be levied. The size, shape and placement of the bar should fulfill two different purposes. The element of layout and decor and the element of function. The element of layout and decor are primary concerns of the owner, architect and the interior designer who plan the size, shape, appearance and position of the bar in the room. The element of function that is the working areas where the drinks are mixed and poured are planned by the facilities design consultant or an equipment dealer. Bar mainly are divided into three parts and each part has its own function. A front bar which is a front part of bar counter where we take orders from the guest and we serve the drinks by the bartender. The back bar which is the back area of the bar counter where the bartenders stand and work and the under bar which is the under area of the front bar counter on the bartender's side. Customers order their drinks and these drinks are served at the front bar. Thus, front bar is also called the customer's area. It is typically 16 to 18 inches wide with an alcohol proof and waterproof top surface, usually made of laminated plastic and often padded armrest runs along the front edge. It is usually 13 inches wide. Thus, the total width of the front bar is 24 to 26 inches. The last few inches of the back edge of the front bar are usually recessed and the bartender pours the drinks here. To demonstrate liquor, brand and pouring skills. This recessed area is known by various names like rail, glass rail, drip rail or spill drop. The vertical structure supporting the front bar is known as the bar die. It is like a wall separating the customer from the working area. It forms a T with the bar, making a kind of table on the customer side, with the other side shielding the under bar from the public view. There is usually a footrest running the length of the die on the customer side about a foot off the ground. This footrest is made of brass rail which has brass spittoons every few feet. The height of the front bar usually is 42 to 48 inches which is a good working height for the bartender. It also makes the front bar just right for leaning against with one foot on the footrest. All underbar equipments are designed to fit under this 42 inch high front bar. If it is a sit down bar, it will have stools tall enough to turn the front bar into a table. Each stool is allotted a 2 feet length of bar. The stools should look and feel comfortable and should have upholsters, back and seats. The back bar 
which is usually 24 inches in depth has a double function the decorative function of display and the work function of storage it is the area where bottles of liquor and rows of sparkling glassware are traditionally displayed there is a mirror behind them the mirror has twofold purpose or function one it doubles the splendor of the bottles due to reflection and other it gives the person sitting at the bar a full view of what is happening behind him a modern bar still follows the same tradition of bottles glassware and mirror people feel it is just not a bar without them there are functional reasons too the liquor and glassware are part of the bartender's working supplies and the bar bar is a good place to display call brands the mirror adds depth to the room it gives customer a view of others at the bar and of the action going on behind them bartenders sometimes use it to observe customers without being noticed new fashions in back bar deco are branching out to include stained glass paneled or textured walls murals posters wine racks mood pieces and conversation starters stemware hanging from slotted racks overhead is popular as a design element as well as for functional glass storage the base of the back bar is likely to be storage space refrigerated or otherwise it may house special equipment such as glass coaster an ice machine or a mechanical dishwasher if specialty drinks are featured the frozen drink or espresso machine will probably be be on the top of the back bar the cash register is usually on the back bar in a recess space whatever be its uses since customers look at the back bar it should not only be visually pleasing but coordinate with the decor of the room also under bar is the heart of the entire beverage operation utmost care and attention is required to design it so that all the equipments and supplies are arranged compactly and efficiently undoubtedly the speed of producing different mixed drinks should be the overriding concern workspaces of under bar equipments are 30 inches high with a depth of 16 inches to the backsplash of the rear units fit side by side and give the appearance of being continuous each bartender should have an individual supply of pouring ice liquor mixes glasses mixer blender and garnishes all within arm's reach in the pouring station in the under bar each pouring station has an ice bin and one or more bottle racks for the most used liquor and mixers the supply of glasses may be upside down on the glass rail on drain boards near the ice bin on special glass shelves in glass racks stacked behind the station on the back bar in overhead racks or in all of these places grouped according to their types and sizes the blender and mixer is on a recessed shelf besides the ice bin while the garnishes are on the top bar in a special condiment tray the under bar also contains equipment for washing glasses a three or four compartment sink with drain boards on both sides or in some cases a mechanical dishwasher the under bar must also have provision for waste disposal 
and a hand sink. Bar staff must use a wide range of equipment items that help them to mix each guest drink efficiently, expertly and seemingly effortlessly. It is crucial to have right utensils and equipment in bar which meet the requirements and expectations of the guests as well as applicable operations in the bar counter. Bar opening duties include completing the requisition for bar stocks for the day's trading, carrying out housekeeping duties, cleaning one area of the bar shelves thoroughly on each day of the week so that over the seven day period every part of the bar receives attention, requisitioning food or beverage items which are required from the stores, wiping and polishing bar arid table tops wherever appropriate. Bar duties also include collecting clean linen before service, restocking the shelves in the bar behind the bottles which are already there, labels should always face the customer with each bottle wiped clean as it is put in place, old stock is put in front of the new stock. Checking that an adequate supply of ice is available, ensuring that you have sufficient cash float, laying out cocktail equipment where needed, checking that optics are in working order, attending to the beer casks in the cellar and turning on the beer taps. A small sample of each beer should be tasted. And lastly, polishing the glassware. The bar closing duties include checking and clearing the tills, completing bar summary sheet, removing empty bottles from the bar, attending to the beer casks in the cellar and turn off the beer taps, collecting all glasses and ashtrays from the bar tables, Crushing out the ashtrays into a metal bin, making the bar ready for early cleaning the next morning by placing the chairs on the tables, starting a requisition list of known items of stock which will be required the next day. The list will be completed by the next day's opening team, washing all glassware returning usable fruit to the fridge, disconnecting electrical equipment except for tills and refrigeration or cooling cabinets by removing the plugs from the socket, pulling down and securing all grills, hatches and windows. The objectives of a food and beverage control system may be summarized as below. Analysis of Income and Expenditure The analysis is solely concerned with the income and expenditure related to beverage operations. The revenue analysis is usually by each selling outlet of such aspects as the volume of beverage sales, the sales mix, the average spending power of customers at various times of the day and the number of customers served. The analysis of costs include departmental beverage costs, portion costs and labor costs. The performance of each outlet can then be expressed in terms of the gross profit and the net profit margin. Next we have the establishment and maintenance of standards. The basis of the operation of any beverage outlet is the establishment of a set of standards which would be particular to an operation. Unless standards are set, 
no bus staff would know in detail the standards to be achieved nor could the employees performance be effectively measured by management an efficient unit would have the set standards laid down in manuals often known as sops which are standard operating procedures which should be readily available to all staff for reference an important objective of beverage control is to provide a sound basis for menu pricing it is therefore important to determine beverage list prices in the light of accurate beverage costs as well as general market considerations such as the average customer spending power prices charged by competitors and the prices that the market will accept in order to achieve performance standards for an establishment targets are set for turnover cost levels and profit margins to achieve this level of performance it is necessary to prevent wastage of materials caused by such things as poor preparation over production failure to use standard recipes etc this can only be done with an efficient method of control which covers the complete cycle of control it is necessary for a control system to prevent or at least restrict the possible areas of fraud by customers and staff typical areas of fraud by customers are such things as deliberately walking out without paying unjustifiably claiming that the drink that they had partly or totally consumed was unpalatable and indicating that they will not pay for it disputing the number of drinks served making payments by stolen checks or credit cards typical area of fraud by staff are overcharging or undercharging for items served and stealing of drink or cash a system of control has an important task to fulfill in providing accurate up to date information for the preparation of periodical reports for management this information should be sufficient so as to provide a complete analysis of performance for each outlet for an establishment for comparison with such standards previously laid down this honest bar staff attempt to steal sales revenue in many ways the different ways by which the employees steal the revenue and liquor and the precautions that the management can take to reduce the possibility of theft and hence frauds are discussed hereby we will first look at the beverage or the liquor related theft and fraud these thefts and fraud are generally due to manipulation of quantity quality or source of liquor by the bartender or the beverage servers Firstly we look at under pouring which is also called as short pouring it is pouring a measure lesser than what has been ordered by a guest this fraud does not affect the beverage cost percentage under pouring alcohol in mixed drinks is widespread and goes unnoticed because it is pre mixed when served sometimes under pouring is resorted to comp- compensate for shortages caused by overpouring the precaution that a manager can take here the bartenders should be told to prepare all drinks using a peg measure and not to free pour under any circumstances other solutions include a policy of pouring in full guest view wherever possible use of bar optics or pourers fitted to bottles that deliver an exact measure of liquor the use of automatic drink dispensing systems 
the use of shoppers to regularly observe and report on this fraud. Moreover, bartenders should not be allowed to use their own measuring devices to avoid this fraud. Diluting liquor like gin, vodka, white rum, tequila etc which are colorless and pocketing income from the additional drinks sold is called dilution. Further, if this liquor is used in cocktails, it is unlikely that the guest will notice minor changes in taste. Dilution resorted to compensate for shortages caused by overpouring. The precaution that the manager can take here is use shoppers to regularly watch the bartenders and investigate frequent guest complaints about the strength of the liquor. Bottles may be checked as some liquors turn cloudy when water or soda are added. Other liquors turn a lighter color. One way pourers in the neck of the bottles are another way of preventing dilution. Density checks with the help of a hydrometer may be performed if dilution is suspected and compared with its original density. Sometimes an excess of one brand of liquor may be used to level off the shortage in another brand. This is called adulteration. Many a times over pouring one brand of liquor may be leveled off by using the excess liquor. Bringing in personal bottles Also called the phantom bottle fraud. Bartenders serve drinks from these bottles when the guest order matches with the brand of liquor brought in by them. The sale is not billed and the cash is pocketed. This fraud does not affect the inventory level no the beverage cost percentage but results in severe loss of revenue to the organization precautions that a manager can take here is marking and identifying hotel bottles in a unique and hard to duplicate manner like stamping and regular visual inspection helps to eliminate this practice keep bottle stamps secure so that the employees cannot misuse them another that could be used along with stamping is to break all empty its contents into an empty liquor bottle that has the property stamp substitution serving a lower quality brand when guest order for call brand and billing the guest for the expensive call brand thus Pocketing the extra cash is called substitution. Some bartenders even fill an empty call brand bottle with house brand. In this case, even guests seated at the front bar will not suspect that a wrong brand is being served. Here, the inventory may reveal a shortage if the stock of each liquor is listed and maintained separately. To cover up, the bartender may resort to leveling off the shortage by dilution, short pouring, or adulteration by adding similar liquor of some other brand. Precaution that a manager can take here: bartenders and bar servers should be made to write all drinks orders on a BOT, which is billed by a separate cashier. Having a separate cashier is desirable as it makes the billing function independent of the liquor service function which facilitates control. An alternative method is to write all drink orders onto a check and having the bartender ring up the amount on the guest bill before serving the drink thereby charging the guest the right amount and denying the bartender any excess. using personal drink measuring devices aiding in underpouring these personal drink measures help obtain excess liquor selling the same and pocketing the excess cash guests do not suspect 
as liquor is filled to the brim before being dispensed into the glass and they would never doubt that the volume of the peg measure itself is faulty. Precaution that a manager can take here is routinely check the portion control tools that is the peg measures, the pourers, jiggers etc. And the bartenders should be made to use only the tools provided by the facility. Selling drinks for cash and recording them as billed, accident, returned, walkout or complimentary. It helps in pocketing the money that results from the sale. Sometimes staff collects the beer from undrained bottles and glasses to fill a full bottle designated it as a flat beer and claim a replacement in exchange. It is then sold and the proceeds are pocketed or simply drunk by the bartender. Precautions that a manager can take here. Bartenders should be authorized to give out free drinks and complimentary drinks must first be authorized by somebody in authority. Any return drink and a request for replacement must be approved by management. Also, accidents must be evidenced by the service staff and approved by the management. Like showing the crown intact neck of a beer before a replacement is given. To avoid frauds like building the bottle Close supervision of table clearance, introduction of a policy of removal of the used beer bottles to the pantry area where they will be stacked in an inverted manner and the immediate clearance of all glasses to the wash-up area for washing. Moreover, retraining and closely supervising bartenders or bar servers having excessive spillage records or high pouring costs should be undertaken. A spoilage or accident report must be made out for all such occurrences and signed by a responsible person. Look out for deliberate attempts on part of the staff to make extra money using this modus operandi. Misuse of one full against one empty bottle policy. In hotels, restaurants that have a system of issuing one full against one empty bottle, bar staff may bring in empty bottles from out and exchange for full bottles from the hotel, store or cellar. Consequently, drinks from bottles are sold and the cash pocketed. It results in a sharp difference of the beverage cost as the bottle cost is incurred by the hotel without a corresponding increase in its revenue. Precautions that a manager can take here is having an established pass stock and random checking of this pass stock is recommended so that the fraud is avoided. But a better precaution is to stamp the purchase bottles with signature of the seller man or special identifying label or special sticker or a rubber stamp to which only authorized personnel have access. Comparing standard beverage costs to achieved beverage costs periodically may eliminate this kind of fraud. Overpouring Bartenders do so to influence the guest for a larger tip or buy them a drink. Precautions that a manager can take here Bartender should be told to prepare all drinks using a peg measure and not to free pour under any circumstances. Other solutions include use of bar optics or pourers fitted to bottle that deliver an exact measure of liquor. The use of automatic drink dispensing system and use of mystery shoppers to regularly observe and report on this fraud. Moreover, bartenders should not be allowed to use their own measuring devices to avoid this fraud. Removing unconsumed bottles at hosted banquet functions. Doing so, they are charged to the host as consumed. 
This can be easily done as the consumption is usually on the basis of bottle count basis. Here the barman may import empty bottles into the function room bar which have in reality not been consumed at the party of the host. Whisk away an equivalent amount of full bottles and raise the amount payable by the guest. The bottles thus siphoned away are then taken for personal use or transferred to the main bar for fraudulent use as it is an excess stock. Precaution that a manager can take here is having tile pass stock counted and marked, ensuring tight physical supervision on the dispense of drinks, placing all bottles on the bar top in full view of the guest and even having a person from the host party keeping an eye on the service or dispensing bar counter helps in avoiding such a fraud. Giving away free drinks to friends Precautions that can be taken is to not allow bartenders to provide complimentary drinks without management approval. All the drinks should be dispensed against BOT only. Use shoppers to spot these and similar problems. And lastly, trading liquor with the cook for food. Precaution that can be taken is enforce strict eating and drinking policies. Management should stay alert for signs of eating and drinking. Example, plates and glasses in the restroom or items hidden at workstations, etc. Similarly, there are also billing related thefts and frauds. In many bars, the bartenders collect the money with the help of a bar cash register before and after serving the drinks. This provides the dishonest barman with ample of scope for billing frauds. These frauds and thefts are equally valid for a bar cashier as well. Firstly, accumulating the individual drink sales. This fraud often happens when a group of guests are running up a tab. It is done particularly for a liquor until the entire bottle is used and ultimately recorded as a bottle sale. The sales price of a full bottle is generally lesser than the accumulated sales of the equivalent number of individual drinks obtained from the same bottle. Thus, the difference will be pocketed. Precaution that a bar manager can take. Our policy includes using shoppers, closely supervising employees and making it mandatory for bartenders to record all drinks on guest checks, beverage order tickets before they are served and cashers will bill for them. The bill may later be cross tallied against the pre-checks or the BOTs. Pre-recording and registering the sale of drinks during the happy hours. It is done to pocket the difference when the drinks are actually sold at a higher price during normal hours. Precaution. The use of different colored guest checks during these happy hours will help prevent this. Using own guest checks or private sales checks. It is used to collect sales income instead of those authorized by the establishment and the sales proceed is pocketed. Precaution, use unique, hard to duplicate guest checks at your property. Reusing paid guest check. Many times the bartender of the beverage server serves a guest and collects the sales income without rigging in it up. He or she uses the old guest checks for the orders and pockets the sales revenue. The cashier immediately upon completing the service. Precaution Require bartenders to ring up all POTs and deposit them in a locked box to which only management has access. Abnormally, long times between picking up the bill 
and depositing the same should be suspected and must be investigated. Using a pre-check system for the pickup of beverage orders ensures cross-referencing to find the culprit. Overcharging. When drinks are being served to a group of customers who are running a tab, the barman or cashier many a times adds a charge for a few more drinks. The guest overlooks the same and pays the amount unquestioningly. In case it is caught, the bartender may claim an oversight, rectify the error and possibly get away. After departure, such bill is adjusted for the sales difference which is then pocketed. The stock will not differ because the extra drinks charged were never served. This act of deliberately overcharging the guest if he is in an intoxicated state is called as overcharging. Precaution: Any alterations on a bill must be authorized by the manager only and a satisfactory explanation should be sought. Strict action should be taken against beverage servers caught short charging or overcharging the guest. It may serve as a deterrent. A computerized system of billing would reduce charging, overcharging in prices charged. Servers may collect cash and destroy a check. Precaution. When checks are accounted for, the missing checks are noticed. When a server genuinely loses checks or guests leave without paying, additional training may be imparted. A stiff penalty for lost checks may be implemented. Having a pre-check system will ensure that there is backtracking to find the value of the lost check. A server may claim that a dissatisfied guest returned an item listed on the guest check and turn it only tile income for the remaining items and pocket the difference. Precaution: The manager should approve all returned menu items and approve any changes to totals recorded on the checks. Bartender and server split the income earned. By working in collusion so that the property does not receive income for drinks prepared and served. Precaution: Rotate employee shifts. Management should be alert about employee relationships and use control systems to monitor beverage cost percentages. Methods of beverage control. Firstly, there's the bar cost system. This is similar to the daily food cost report and detailed food cost report. It may be produced for each bar separately for all of the beverage operations. Then there is the bar stock or the bottle control system. This is a simple yet effective method of beverage control and it is particularly used for the smaller type operations where there are few full-time control staff. The following point should be noted. The level of bar stock is established for each bar. That is, to establish for each beverage the number of bottles required for a busy day plus a small safety factor. This number is determined to be the stock level to be held in the bar at the beginning of the service each day. To simplify the system, only full bottles are counted. Partial bottles are not counted. The number and type of empty bottles are noted each day. This being the amount and type to be requisitioned for the day. The potential sales are based on the quantities issued at selling price and are compared to actual revenue received. Adjustments to be made to the initial selling price if many mixed drinks are sold. This may only be necessary if the difference between potential and actual sales figures give causes for investigation. 
The advantages of the system is the simplicity and ease of the operation. Then we have the potential or standard sales value system. This system is designed to control beverage sale and therefore beverage cost by setting a sales value on each bottle item carried in stock. The revenue value of each bottle is based on the standard size of the drink, the contents of the bottle and the selling price of each drink. The sales value of each drink is called the potential sales value. The system requires as a basis for its operation established standards for a bottle code number system, drink recipe, drink sizes, glassware and pass stocks. Whenever the bottle size, drink size or recipe change a new calculation must be made and recorded as this can affect the price of a drink and should require the price to be reviewed. The various calculations with the sales variations are concerned with full bottle of spirits, spirits sold by glass, soft drinks and mineral water sales and cocktails. A cellar is a centralized storage area for all kinds of alcoholic beverages in a hotel. The cellar stock is expensive and should be efficiently administered and supervised. The cellarman protects the valuable stock from theft, maintains the quality of the stock by storing them at appropriate temperatures and monitors the movement of the stock. An effective cellar management ensures proper storage and a timely supply to the various bars. It is managed by a cellar man who ensures the control on the alcohol purchase, storage and movement of stock. Cellar should be well ventilated and clean with a dim lighting. Some cellars have bottle cooling shelf for efficient control on the temperature at the cellar to store beers and wines. Cellar is divided into five various subsections to store the various beverages as follows. Front bar of the cellar having a temperature of 13 to 16 degrees centigrade to store spirits, red wines and also keg beers if the movement of keg beer is high in the premise. A refrigerated area having temperature of 40 degree Fahrenheit for storing white wines, rosé wines, sparkling wines and champagnes. Depending on the low movement of keg beers, a refrigerated area maintaining the temperature of 6 to 8 degree centigrade is also maintained in the cellars. Bottled can beers, mineral waters and soft drinks are stored in the refrigerated area maintaining the temperature of 13 to 15 degrees centigrade. A separate area for empties received from various outlets and bars are also maintained to avoid the misuses of empties and to sell them. Wine bottles with cork should always be stored horizontally in the designated racks so that cork remains in touch with the wine or else the wine will get withered and the cock particles will get mixed in the wine resulting in a cocky wine. It is almost important to check that cock remains airtight so that it doesn't allow air to enter. Whereas other spirits, liqueurs, syrups and cordials should always be kept on the shelves. Fortified wines are stored upright except vintage port which are to be stored on their sides. Unopened bottled case cases are stored in the lower racks whereas opened cases should be emptied and bottles from it be poured in should be stored properly in their place at upper rack by placing new arrivals at the back and the old stock in the front allowing the seller man to issue the old stock first. All bottles are to be assigned bin numbers to implement better control and to be stored as per the bin number. 
factors to be considered while designing a cellar. Firstly, the location. A wine cellar should be placed in the coolest and most humid place of the hotel. The ambient temperature of the place should be around 55 to 58 degree Fahrenheit, which with 55 to 75 percent humidity, as this will help in placing a small cooling unit, thus reducing the cost. If the surrounding environment has an average yearly temperature of 85 degree Fahrenheit compared to an average tem temperature of 65 degree Fahrenheit, then a larger cooling unit will be required in order to maintain proper conditions. A dry environment will also require a more frequent introduction of humidity. Installing insulations. The designated area should be well insulated with the help of chemicals, sprays or any other materials as this is an essential requirement for a healthy cellar. Refrigeration The proposed system of refrigeration should be chosen in the beginning itself as this will eliminate the possibility of leaving behind any cracks during the finishing stages. It can be a ducted air handler or ductless split or a self-contained cooling unit. Vapor Barrier A good quality vapor barrier should be installed in a cellar as this helps in maintaining the desired humidity and temperature inside the cellar and also assists in better insulation. Electrification the cellar should be properly electrified as many machines or equipment used in cellar work on electricity. Also, the electrification boards and lighting system should be placed at places in between the racks or in the corners. So before doing the electrification, there should be a proper plan for rack positioning. Wall coverings. Any material which is water resistant and resistant to high humidity can be installed for wall coverings. Any other material which does meet out the criteria will fail to work in the given environment. The wall should be painted with primer first followed by a good quality water based exterior paint. Floorings. When installing flooring in a wine cellar, it should be ensured that the flooring should withstand the high humidity environment. Therefore, carpenting is avoided for many reasons, including the possibility of getting rot. Also, usage of vinyl flooring should be avoided as the mastic under it will remain moist and the flooring will have the tendency to move and buckle. It is always suggested to have a bare concrete floor or more decorative option like porcelain tiles, cork or hardwood flooring. Ceiling In addition to utilizing tongue and groove paneling for a ceiling, a raised panel ceiling can also be installed. This does not provide any substantial difference to insulation value but it does make a dramatic difference in the aesthetic look of cellar. Raised panel ceilings can be made to any room configuration whether it is a square, rectangle, octagon or a circle. Lastly, lighting. There are very few limitations when it comes to lighting options for a wine cellar. If can lighting is to be utilized in a wine cellar, then thermally fused can lights should be used, also referred to as IC rated cans. There are also some concerns with the harmful effects of UV lights on long term storage. Let us now look at the different systems of bar books. The beverage requisition. 
different types of bars operating under one roof or control system are supposed to collect the required alcoholic beverage from the seller against the beverage requisition signed by the authorized person. The seller man collects the top copy of the requisition and issues the stock requested against the signature of the person receiving it and the empty bottles. The seller in words book. This provides accurate reference to all beverages coming into the seller and posting data for the seller man's bin cards. Whenever necessary, it is a usual check against the perpetual beverage inventory ledger held in the food and beverage control or accounts office. Seller control book. This provides a record of all daily deliveries to the seller and the daily issues of each beverage from the seller to the various bars and should cross check with the entries on their pin cards and the various EPOS sales and inventory control system. Pin cards. These are provided for each individual type of beverage held in stock and record all deliveries and issued made. The cards being fixed on the shelves or racks against each beverage. The bin card numbers referring to the same bin numbers as the wine list and originating from the standard bottle code list. Ulages and breakages. It is necessary for all ulages and breakages to be recorded together with an explanation and countersigned by a member of the FNB management department. The frequency of the recording of any ulages and breakages would determine the necessity for management to take corrective action. The term ulage is used to cover all substandard beverages such as bottles of weeping wines, bottles of wine with faulty cocks, unfit barrels of beer, etc which whenever possible would be returned to the supplier for replacement. Breakages of bottled beverages usually occur by mishandling by the seller and bar staff. The returns book. Sometimes the good received are returned to the suppliers when the quality is bad or the bottles are damaged. The bottles returned to the suppliers are recorded in the returns book, which is also called as purchase return book. Empties Many of the containers of beverage such as crates, kegs, beers, bottles, soda siphons, etc. are charged for by the supplier against a delivery. It is therefore necessary that control be maintained on these charged items to ensure that they are returned to the supplier and that the correct credit is obtained. Every week, the stock taking of the seller is taken. Actual stock taking is closing the stores and physically taking count of all items. Perpetual stock taking is taking stocks through books of the stores. The physical inventory should be checked against the perpetual inventory. The month end seller stock inventory should be done under the supervision of the controls department. After the physical verification of stock beverage inventory, the variance is calculated and the management is apprised of the same. Internal controls can help minimize risk and reduce the likelihood of fraudulent activities taking place. Fraud is a prevalent issue and it happens in many beverage outlets, making internal controls a must-have. Some of the essential basic internal controls that can help the bar outlet run smoothly and prevent theft of fraudulent activities from taking place are discussed here. 
first click cache. Cache is of course something that needs internal controls to keep safe and accounted for. It is essential to pay close attention to the numbers and make sure everything is accounted for. Random draw counts should also be implemented in order to make sure you have the correct amount of money in the draw. All cash should be secured in the locked register during business hours and in a safe during non-business hours. The financial statements for a bar are an extremely important and useful tool for identifying possible fraudulent activities. It is a smart business habit to reconcile all financial statements at least once a month. This means actually auditing all ledger accounts and making certain that all numbers are correct. It is easy for something to hide within one of your accounts and go unnoticed if no review is taking place. You should also have an individual sign off on all manual journal entries. This is an easy place for employees to commit fraud and have it go unnoticed because it can be disguised as a normal transaction. Store monitoring is a process the bar manager should be regularly performing as an internal control. It is important to review and look at all store invoices to make sure you are not overpaying vendors or paying a vendor that doesn't need to be paid. Inventory should also be closely monitored in order to make sure that all records match up with what is actually on the shelf. Both physical and perpetual systems of inventory must be emphasized. Past stocks should also be maintained. Access control Making sure each employee has specific access rights based on their position and level within an outlet is an easy and rewarding control. If access rights are not proper to each employee's position, it opens your company up to the possibility of fraud. Employees should only have computer and asset access for the things they need to do their specific job and nothing more. Internal controls are essential processes for all beverage outlets. The number of internal controls a business could possibly implement are far and wide ranging. It's important to determine and implement measures that will help your bar accomplish its goal of minimizing risk and reducing the likelihood of fraudulent activities taking place.